Go. Show you what all the animals eat. So we're gonna good morning. Good morning, Fred. Good morning from the Sedgwick County Zoo. Welcome, everybody. And we are with Kara, Kara and Carrie. I'm passing it over to you, Carrie. Hi, welcome everyone. Kara, what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to, or for this session, we're talking about a lot of stuff today, but for this session, we're going to talk about animal enrichment and training because those things are vital to our health and welfare of the animals that we have here at Sedgwick County Zoo. We want them to be as happy and healthy as possible, and we want them to express their natural behaviors. And so we give them plenty of opportunities to do that, through enrichment and also training. So enrichment is the, I'm trying to think of a very succinct way to say it because there is a very formal definition, but I think it's easier to understand if we just say enrichment is something new um, or novel, because we're gonna be fancy scientists talk about it, that we give to animals so that they can express natural behaviors. It could stimulate them to think harder. It could, it could be um, a, a food treat, which we have to be careful of with food treats. It could actually be something that they don't like and they want to avoid. It cannot be something that will injure them or cause stress. So like, I am not a perfume person. I do not like perfume and please don't spray bathroom spray when I'm around. So that that is an enrichment for me when someone sprays the, the bathroom spray because I actively seek a way to avoid interacting with that. So, but if somebody makes French fries, I will actively seek a way to interact with those French fries. So we're just giving the animals some choice and control over their exhibit and their life so they can choose to do fun things. And we have some really great animals with us today who do get enrichment. We enrich all of the animals. And I am gonna start with this guy right here in the middle. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move you over, sis. Sorry, zookeepers sometimes talk to their animal friends in silly voices. That would be me. And you can see, I hope, a little tiny garter snake in there. She is new to us. We've only had her since April. And we are careful with her enrichment because we don't want to overwhelm her. We want her to be, she's very young, and we want her to be secure and confident. So we use mostly um, structural um, enrichment. So we change things in her tank to give her different places to hide. We might move her water so it's in a different place. One of the things that we don't often do is move her heat sources or her light sources. Those need to be consistent. And one thing that's really fun is handling the animals is also considered enrichment. And I'm gonna take the top off her habitat which she's getting big enough that she might be able to reach someday soon. And I'm going to reach in and get her. She's still a little shy. You could see she's not much bigger than a worm, which is what she eats. And she's very fast. Oh, she's trying to hide her little head. So we handle her as a form of enrichment because we want to be able to bring her to your classroom so that you guys can meet her up close and personal. And so we do handle her to get her so that she doesn't think it's a bad thing, so that she enjoys it. Some of the older snakes that have been here longer just love being in our hands because they're warm and it means something new is about to happen. Now this girl gets handled um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening. I Well, we find them every night to make sure they're ready for bed. But on those nights, I find her and I take her out and put her in my hands, and then I show her her delicious worm dinner that she's gonna have, and then she'll go for that worm dinner. And this is a common garter snake. You guys might, oh, she's posing. You guys might find these in your yards. She's a very fast girl. And we, so sometimes we don't know if our animals are boys or girls um, because reptiles and amphibians don't often have their boy girl parts on the outside like mammals do but we theorize that she's a girl because of the way her tail, which starts right here and then goes to the end of her body, um, slims down so much so quickly. That's a female trait of a garter snake. 
Mm. Now, I am going to put her back in very gently. And so we were talking when when they brought her over here for us, I asked them to take her water out so it wouldn't spill. And so they did that and they did a beautiful job of that. But then when they put it back in, it spilled. But I consider that enrichment too, because now this side that's usually dry is wet and that gives her just more choice of where to go. Um, she can choose if she wants to be on the warm side or the cool side or the dry side or the wet side. She can choose if she wants to hide and she can choose if she wants to be out and present. She oftentimes, if she does not want to be handled, she tells us that too. And she does that by musking. And that's a behavior where she makes a, it's almost like a tiny little poop that smells really, really bad. And it, it works, it gets you to put them down. So sometimes she'll do that and we know that she is choosing not to participate in the enrichment of being handled. So I'll go ahead and put her lid back on. And you guys notice that she has this cool light on top. This light acts like artificial sunlight and it's very important for reptiles to have um, the special lights it's uvb light and it is the light that helps them digest food and it helps with healthy bone growth and so we make sure that all of our reptiles have those lights and we actually have to change the bulbs every year so it can be kind of expensive so if you're thinking about getting a snake or a reptile as a pet you need to investigate lighting i'm happy to help just email ask the zoo and say kara told me to ask her about lighting for a reptile so we we do help you guys figure those things out so that was enrichment by handling sometimes we do enrichment with novelties like toys and we have some toys here and these this is just a plastic basketball and this is just a wooden puzzle toy that has a little ball inside i don't think the animals care about the ball that's inside at all um, we actually sometimes will put a treat inside so they have to work to get the treat out. We really want to engage their brains and um, make them work for the result. The animals that we would put the plastic ball with are animals that would not chew it up because we have to think about the safety of the enrichment as well. So like the garter snake, she couldn't chew this, um, but the chinchilla could, and that's who we're going to talk about next. And he is so handsome and he's ready for his glamour shots. His name is Dyson and I bet I can get him to come over here and see me. His favorite enrichment is interactions as well. So you notice I'm actually let's let's now we'll be fine. Don't you go anywhere. He's he is like the fastest little lightning bolt. And so I'm going to get my hand in there and start giving him the inter interaction. And then I am too scared to put the door all the way down because I don't want him to bail on me. But he loves scratches and he loves them in his armpits. He holds his little arms up for us. And he also likes them on his head and under his chin. Oh. He really, I and mean, he'll go to sleep if I do it long enough. See, he tilts his head so I get it at just the right spot. Oh, he's going to sleep. But he is very curious and his natural behavior in South America where chinchillas live. I'm gonna go ahead and shut his door. Yay, we did it without him bopping out. Um, he spends a lot of time hopping and jumping around the rocks. And so we give him things to climb. I'm still here. We give him things to climb and move around with um, and we change them often because we know that in nature um, obstructions like logs and sticks are going to be changing all the time as he's moving over his habitat. He also really likes boxes. He likes to sleep in them. He likes to tinkle in them. He likes to move them around and he loves to chew them. And you'll notice there's a big metal bowl in the middle of the exhibit. That's his dust bath. And his dust bath is actually enrichment for me 
because when he gets in there and takes a dust bath, it makes me giggle and laugh and feel so happy because he is using that dust bath. He flops around and gets himself all dusty. And the reason he uses a dust bath is because he has such dense fur that if he took a water bath, his fur would get moldy and he would get sick. So we're very careful to keep him dry. Oh, here he goes showing you how he's arranging his house today. His LaCroix coconut water box. We use lots of food boxes in this department because our animals really like to have places to hide. So he's getting it just right. And we can also use food as enrichment. He's kind of picky though. He doesn't um, like all fruits and vegetables. His favorite thing, and you guys, this might blow your little minds, his favorite thing that he reacts to most strongly are the strawberry flavored raisins that you guys got in your um, lunches that your parents would pick up for you last year from the pickup line. One, one kid didn't like the strawberry raisins, so they gave them to us and he loves them. So now we hoard them and we only use them when we're training him. And so he is so much fun to have around. I actually like to let him out of his enclosure and let him run around the building or the room while I'm cleaning. Oh, is that a delicious piece of grass, buddy? And that way he gets some energy out, but he's pretty naughty and he always, always jumps on top of the garter snake habitat. And then he jumps up next to the guinea pigs and they, ha they, they have words. They don't, they're not friends, they don't like each other. And so I have to keep them down from there. And then let me show you another friend, actually a double friend over here, who is, they, these guys are so smart. Hi, Ruth. So this is Ruth and Ruth is a rat. She is so smart. People don't give animals the credit they need. So one of the things when we talk about health and welfare and um, enrichment is we want them to have the best social structure that they can have. And what you can't see right now, maybe you can, in this white um, box in the back, you'll see a little bitty pinky nose sticking out. Oh, she just sucked it back in. That's Chrysa. And Chrysa is a rat that we had and she was living by herself and she was very shy and she was very scared and not interested in us at all. So we knew that the best solution would be to bring in a second rat and that's where Ruth came from. And Ruth is very confident. She is very curious. She also has a really good snoot or a nose and she knows I've got a treat. Oh, but her hand is dirty and she has to fix that. So come down here, come on Ruth. So Ruth will come down here and this is one of the things that they like. These are just plain old sunflower seeds and this is an enrichment for her. But we have to be really careful with food enrichment because we can't let the animals get fat. Um, the, the vets, when we asked about having rats, they said, yes, you can have rats, but if they get obese, you won't be able to have them anymore. So we monitor their diets to make sure that they're not getting too many calories in a day. And things like sunflower seeds and peanuts have lots of calories. You have to remember the size of their stomach is very small. So while I would love a handful, come on, Chrysa. While I would love a handful oh, of, a yeah, she's pink, she's sort of a pinky peach color. I, I can't give them a carrot size serving even though I really want to because in my family we love with food. But I just have to give them small amounts so that they don't get overweight because that's just as bad for them as it is for humans. So I'll put them in that food bowl. Hi, baby. She can't see very well. Most rats don't see well. And if you ever see a rat and it's sort of moving back and forth, then they're, they're trying to bring into focus what's in front of them. We think um, that Chrysa has very limited vision just because of her color, 
and the color of her eyes. Rats with red eyes are often blind and her eyes are sort of red. So we um, know that she relies a lot on the sense of touch to find her way around her exhibit. And Ruth would really like nothing more than for me to pick her up and hold her on my shoulder. But I'm not gonna do that because we have some more friends to talk about. Watch your pitties, watch your toes. You have to be so careful. Go look in the bowl. Go look in the bowl, buddy. So this is, it was actually enriching for these guys to come to this side of the building anyway. They don't usually come over here or go for long rides in their habitats. So they're all kind of going, whoa, what's happening? Okay, so this animal that you're looking at right now that Tori has on a stick is Pulau. And Pulau is a prehensile tail skink and he moves all over his exhibit all the time. And he is an animal that does get to go on programs. Um, so we really have to work hard to keep him stimulated. Um, he gets a little nosy if he doesn't have enough things to do. And so we give him lots of climbing opportunities, which he's an arboreal lizard, which means arboreal just means lives in the trees. And you can see he's got some great adaptations for living in trees. His feet have long, sharp uh, nails that he can use to grab onto bark. But watch his tail. He's going to use it to help hold on. And that tail is very strong. And it it keeps him, it, it's like an extra arm. It keeps him from falling. Now he in the past has done some training where he'll touch a um, bright pink ball that's on a stick with his nose and he'll get a treat for it. We haven't kept up with that training very well. Um, and I, I don't know if he would still do it. Sometimes I wondered if he really got what was going on. Reptiles are kind of hard to train because, you know, mammals give us clues that we're familiar with because we're mammals. Reptiles, we have to work a little harder to understand their behavior. All right, now there is some major action going on behind us, or I guess in front of us. Waif the turtle, tortoise, gopher tortoise, is apparently racing herself. She's going on her own personal 5K. And turtles are not nearly as slow as you would think. But we um, had the opportunity to rebuild this exhibit this summer. And so we did some things to make it easy to have some hideouts for them because they like to hide. Um, I don't, I don't really know what Waif the gopher tortoise is up to right now, but she's being busy. But you can see that there's things like, oh, there's, <laughs> there's food boxes. We only use boxes that have um, food or could hold food. So like a Ziploc baggie box would be okay. He's in a Berea pasta box over here. And the, the box had a window, a clear window. We peel that clear window off so that it can't get um, in the animal's mouth and hurt them. And there might be some turtles in some hides. How many do you have in this we, exhibit? In this exhibit, we have four. Can you see his head poking out? Um, that is Mr. Three Toes, the three-toed box turtle. And I bet over here, they, they haven't figured out that this is a nice, sunny, warm spot yet. I don't know why they prefer to be over here on the other side. Oh, and let me just say, we're going to be putting in plants soon um, and that'll give them more places to hide. But we wanted to wait until our fall plant drive was going on. Mr. Three Toes thinks we have food. And that's why he's coming out of the box. But we wanna wait till the fall plant drive comes around so that we can give the best plants to grow in here a chance to get started. So here's another turtle back here. This is Bashful and Bashful is an ornate box turtle and he thinks that he, you might be able to see him better over here. He's, he's just trying to get out of the frame, I think, but he really does think he's the most handsome turtle that's ever lived and he wants to be everyone's boyfriend. <laughs> and wait, and 
Tortoises in general have no concept of personal space. So you'll notice as Waif is walking around, making the rounds through her exhibit, she'll just walk over the other turtles that she's bigger than. Maybe there's somebody in there. Well, I don't see anybody. So they're really good at hiding. Um, and this is the time of year that they start um, slowing down, looking for places to take a nap. And I would say in the next about, oh, three, Three weeks to a month, we'll stop seeing each turtle every day because they're going to find a place to bury themselves under the dirt because that's what they would do outside in nature. Now, sometimes um, with behavior management, okay, with behavior management, we have to separate animals because they don't get along. And that is why Shelly the eastern box turtle is over here. Shelly, Shelly is rude. Shelly does not like the other turtles and Shelly wants to bite them and hold on to them and not let go. So we gave Shelly his own personal space so that he could hang out and not cause trouble. Now I've talked a little bit about training and there is an animal here in the education department that I've been working on training with very hard. And I think we should take a very short walk and see if we can get Miss Rio to do some training. So explain who Miss Rio is. Miss Rio is the education manager a cat, a domestic warfare cat. And she is extremely small. Loves her snuggles. Her. So we will be with her. First thing I want to do with her, or after I walk through the door, is that silver bell that's on the wall. I'm going to we need her to come running. So last time I saw her, she was in the, the library. So here we go. Heard her now. So, Bell, and she knows that she needs to sit on that spot. Um, this was a brainchild to keep her from running out the door. It had the way I planned. But we the classroom. Are you ready to walk? Yo, Rio, walk. Rio, stop. Good girl. You're doing great. Rio, walk. Oh, she sometimes has to clean her face. One more walk and stop. Rio, walk. Stop. All right, students, we are in. Motion right, to we get are a better in feed where they were in the building is just a really tough internet feed, but we're going to try to get that a little bit better for you. Stand by. Do you think it'd be better if we walked outside of the office? Okay, Rio, walk. Rio, walk. Rio, walk. We're moving Rio, the kitty, she and we're moving into another room, guys. Come on, Rio. Rio. There Come. we go. We're going to have a better feed out here. Back to you, Carrie. Rio. So now she's going to be stubborn because she's outside in a little different space. This is Rio. kind of enrichment for her. It is enrichment and training. We want to train them in different areas so that they um, uh, will do what they want to do, what we want them to do without surprises. When I bring her out here, I'm very patient about how long it takes her to come. Good girl. Well, let's see. Do you think we can get her to go all the way to the, the window? I don't know. Rio, you're clean, honey. Walk. Rio, walk. Rio, walk. Rio, I've got it. Rio, come. Sit. 
Good girl. So this is interesting because I never would have thought about training a domestic cat. They're totally trainable. And she actually does this behavior very well in a classroom. These gross treats, these squeezy treats, it doesn't matter the brand, have been her currency. That's the thing that she loves the most. It's a high value reward. So that's why she has been so good at doing this. Now I'm just going to give her a moment to explore and see if you guys have any questions. Miss Smoke, do we have any questions? I noticed some questions. Um, one of the girls wanted to know about the chinchillas. Um, it, actually, it was a whole classroom at Bostic. They wanted to know about the chinchilla spur, how dense it is. And is that an adaptation of where they it, live? It is a great adaptation for keeping them warm because they do live in cold places. But it's an also an ad uh, adaptation to help with predators. Because if something starts to chase a chinchilla, they can let a cloud of fur go. They can just stress a cloud of fur. And that fur is so fine and so fuzzy, it gets in the nose and the eyes of the predator and they can't follow the chichilla anymore. There's about 80 hairs coming out of each follicle. Oh, wow. Another question I had is um, the animals you showed us in the other room, uh -huh. if you could do a rundown of maybe out their ages. Okay. Dyson's birthday is July 17th, and I think he is four now. Chrysa will turn two on uh, Christmas, Christmas Day, and Ruth is about seven months old. And then the garter snake um, is about a year. And Rio is a little over a year. Rio, come. They would like to know, um the animals you showed us in there, do you ever take them to other places for events? Or we, do people have to come here? We actually take them out on program. We take them on um, zoo reaches, and sometimes we even have animals in the zoo, but that's a rare occasion. We have to have special permission for that. Um, but yes, we take them all over the city, actually all over the state. Um, and when we travel with them, we're very careful to make sure that their needs are met. We check on them every hour and we make sure they have fresh water. So it's a it's a really cool opportunity to take it the zoo to small towns. And the turtles we saw, they want to know, do they ever get a chance to go swim? Or do they always stay in there where it's dry? They always stay in there where it's dry. It's actually a misnomer for us to call them turtles. They're actually tortoises, which are land animals. Um, but we do, at, for enrichment, sometimes give them great big water bowls, and they definitely get in those water bowls and oftentimes make a poop. So they don't swim in the water, but we do give them lots of opportunities to have fresh water that they can get into if they want. And they need to know how old Rio is, too. Rio is about, let's see, you're what? A year in... Four months, I think. Now, how come she just rubbed up against you? Oh, that was her making sure that the world knows she's mine or that I'm hers. She actually marked me, scent marked me, um, so that if any other cats came by and smelled me, they'd be like, oh, well, she belongs to Rio. <laughs> Rio, come here. So she doesn't get, she's not allowed to come out here and explore on her own. Um, so this is very enriching for her. And it's usually because she goes straight for the plants and starts chewing on them. But now it looks like she's going to mark those tables with her face so that if another cat comes around, they'll know that those are her tables. Yeah, like one minute left. You think we could have the class get a selfie? Oh, yeah. That would be need. great. Rio, come, buddy. Come. Okay, okay Carrie, it's time for the selfie. Yes, we are getting, we're getting Rio ready for a selfie. Students and teachers, this is where um, teachers, you want to go to the back of the classroom, grab your phones, have the students backs faced um, towards the, the screen so that you looks like Kara and Rio are in a group photo. We'll give you a moment to get in position. 
And we'll hurry because Rio's not going to sit too long, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know. I've got the magic treat here. Oh, Rio's a pretty good kitty. We All love right. Rio. And Kara, we're going to have you smile. And teachers, we're going to give you a quick countdown for a photo. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two and one. Well done, Rio, you're a natural. Thank you so much for joining us today. And students and teachers, we hope you can join us in about 30 minutes where Kara is going to take us on a golf cart safari. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Take care, everybody. <laughs>